This is Twit. This time, though, we're talking a little bit about Amazon, and maybe Amazon's a little late to the party. I don't know. That's one way you could look at this, I suppose. But Amazon officially announced its own AI assistant. It's really designed, though, not for general consumer. It's really designed for the workplace. They call it Amazon Q. The Q, in my opinion, stands for questionable choice of letters in the year 2023. Um, but Emily Dreibelvis wrote about this new chatbot for businesses uh, for PC Mag and is here to talk about it. Welcome back, Emily. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Great to get you here. This is Okay, we got to start with the letter of this thing, um, which I mean, some people might look at this and be like, okay, wow, that's a that's a waste of time even even considering this. But I feel like it's a little strange to name your product the the, the simple letter Q in this day and age. Um, and and Amazon's not alone in this. OpenAI also had had Q Star. What is the deal with the whole Q naming thing? Like, how are, how is what is the explanation or story around this? If you happen to know. I can't explain it beyond that it stands for question, which is a very utilitarian name, which is very Amazon in its own way. So the point of the product is to answer questions. Yeah. Um, when I first heard it, I thought of QAnon. Yes. I don't know what you first, that's, what did you first think of? I mean, that's, yeah, you, you put the finger on the, on the buzzer, buzzer right there. I'm, that's the, that's the, uh, whatever, the, the example that, resi that resides in the last couple of years around the letter Q that makes me really just surprised that not one, but multiple tech companies are actually choosing this as a letter to represent their major AI product. But I guess if they're, you know, if they're marketing it as, as a spin on question or questionable, I don't know. I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. other people have thought of there's a Star Trek character named Q. There's a James Bond character named Q. Okay. So uh, it's right. a it's a big week for the letter Q, which yeah. I guess as yeah. X has been usurping its like letter spotlight. So yeah, that's true. It's, it's Q's turn. OK. Yeah. All right. So those are two letters that we should not name any products anymore you know, <laughs> going forward in perpetuity. So let's talk about what it actually is then. Amazon Q, um, like I said, Design more for business, right? Who's who is the target uh, market for this? It, like within business, is this just anyone using Amazon's cloud products, and it kind of ropes into that? Or how did Amazon explain who their target audience is for this? Yes, exactly. I think it's a very of this moment product for AI. The industry seems to be kind of going towards more private, secure chatbots that are customized to a use case. So mm -hmm. if you think about a business, they are really concerned about their data. They're really concerned about how their employees are going to use it and how they're regulating that. So what this does is it allows businesses to pump in all of their data and then different people and different job functions can use it to assist with their job. And the two examples Amazon gave are related to AWS cloud products. One is their customer service um, product, which is called Amazon Connect. So let's say you work at a hotel chain in customer service and you're answering questions about you know, privacy policy, room policies, cancellation policies. Theoretically, somebody could just go to their Amazon, the agent could go to their Amazon Q instance. They could look up r information related to that question and then hopefully more quickly answer the person on the lines question or, or an email. Um, one, there are businesses that are using it. So they said Accenture, BMW, um, and a couple other companies I had not heard of are using Amazon Q. One of them reported that its customer service agents are able to answer questions 10 to 15 times, 10 to 15% faster. So that's the goal there. But Really, the goal is more for the developers and on the AWS side. So this claims to be an expert in AWS um, answering questions about it at all phases of the product cycle. So Amazon is really leaning into its competitive advantage there. And mm -hmm. a lot of its press release and a lot of what we know about it is related to developers. Okay. Now, um, how then does this compare to what we've seen? Because like you said, like this feels like the very like now actually totally unrelated, but kind of kind of an eye-opening moment for me this morning. I realized that uh, ChatGPT's one-year birthday is today. Oh, so oh. within a year, we've gone from, oh, what is this ChatGPT thing uh, that, that people can start to use? Oh, that's so curious, to you know all of the different kind of maturations and, and kind of uh, developments that have happened in AI. And right now, the last, I'd say, couple of months, maybe even less kind of moment for AI has been these very specific yet sophisticated 
uh, chat bots that can, you know, that you can train on specific tasks instead of them being all expert or uh, air quotes expert on everything. We can focus it. Um, how, you know, based on what Amazon has talked about, these chatbots and how learnable they are for very specific use, use cases. How does that compare to some of the others that we've seen from, you know, like the GPTs and the others out there? Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're spot on. That's how I'm interpreting the evolution of the industry, especially in the last year. I just published an article today on like five things you need to know about chat GPT and where the industry is going. And the last one is exactly the point you just made. Um, so Amazon, it's definitely the release. I found it to be very practical. I liked how they gave a, a portrait of how companies could use this. They said there's, you know, 40 different ways to upload data, whether it's through Dropbox or you have a, a database in Redshift or even Google Drive, Microsoft 365. So they made it very clear how to use it, which is something I haven't necessarily found with Microsoft's Copilot or ChatGPT's Enterprise, which are kind of the competitors. Mm -hmm. um, presumably they all work similarly, but I, I liked Amazon's announcement in that sense. It felt like a step forward in terms of educating people on this. Um, and they all have very similar pricing. So ChatGPT, they have their plus plan, which is $20 a month, which is where you would get those GPTs, those custom AIs that they announced right before all the drama with Sam Altman. Hmm. Um, and then Amazon's version of it, their queue is also $20, but it's $25 for all the developer features. And that's really who they want to be buying the product. Mm -hmm. um, and that's per person. So if you're at a company that has 50 engineers, you're going to spend 25 times 50 per month. So I guess for bigger corporations, let's say um, like a bigger tech company, you'd have to kind of weigh like, oh, I could build a chatbot myself. And that's probably what all these companies are asking themselves. Like how much would it be for us to fine tune an open source model? Mm -hmm. um, there's really good ones out there. We could do that, maybe like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, or we could just use what Amazon is offering and how much would that cost? Who would need the licenses in our organization? And so that's kind of the choice they're being presented. And personally, I think Amazon, uh, if it works, is offering a, a very timely product, at least as far as where AI is now. And I think it's about as as good of a shot as they have. And just the yeah. question is, does it does it work? Yeah, and they have the they certainly have the resources to put behind to, you know, continue mm -hmm. to iterate that when you're kind of spelling out, you know, do we make our own or do we kind of go with Amazon's solution? Like, I have a feeling the way things are progressing so quickly with with AI and chatbot technology and everything right now, that Amazon has the resources to really put behind this and create kind yeah. of a compelling roadmap going forward that keeps people, you know, feeling like that's a, that's a worthy investment. What about the security and privacy of, of this data? That always seems to be at least a part of the question when you're talking about businesses in a, in a situation where they have to share largely, you know, potentially company secrets and things that they don't want anyone else to have even a finger, you know, on the surface of yet this is a service that, you know, in order to be truly effective for certain uh, applications within your business, you do need to share that information. So what is, what is Amazon's assurances around that? The big thing is that the model will not train on the data that it's fed. Yeah, so it's that was standard. what <laughs> pretty standard. Yeah. So that you don't want companies to be sharing their trade secrets, have all their employees asking questions about some new big project or initiative and giving it data about it. And then the model trains on that and either regurgitates it verbatim to someone else at another company or kind of subconsciously learns from it and starts like steering people in that direction. I mean, you don't know what it's going to do with the information and products like the free chat GPT explicitly state in their privacy policy. We cannot guarantee that won't happen. Mm -hmm. So that's the product, the problem with that. And a lot of organizations have banned use of chat GPT, the free version for that reason. So Amazon is saying it won't do that. Um, that's also what chat GPT's enterprise product promises and Microsoft's Copilot. So that's, it seems to be the big thing. Um, Amazon also spelled out different permissions for different users. So again, let's say you're the hotel chain. You want your customer service agents to only be referring to pol like customer service policies. You don't want them to be answering questions about like annual sales data. And you don't even want that to, 
to come up at mm-hmm. all for them because that's it's not useful and it's could be odd to communicate that publicly as part of an answer to a customer. So they're saying you can go in and and set all these settings and these roles and fine tune the model to be perfect for everybody. And of course, solve all the problems in every use case Mm -hmm. (laughs) people are saying AI can do. And I don't know how much work it would take for a company to set this up. Um, And it maybe depends on how big the company is. If, you know, Hilton hotels, they have a million departments. I don't know how they would use it. So it's all very preliminary um, and it's only available in preview now. So, Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's it's more to come. And the big question is, does it work and is it easy to use? Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, we'll look at We'll certainly be following that to to kind of see how it does. I mean, it's a company like Amazon with this insane cloud cloud infrastructure and an AI offering that seems to, at, at least on its surface, based on what we know now, uh, seems to keep pace with what the others in this industry are doing. So that that right there is going to be a winning combination for a lot of people. Before we let you go, what is the what is the deal with Bedrock? Because Bedrock is kind of a part of the underlying architecture here. It's more like a it's more like it's not tied to any specific AI model. It's really like a um, I don't know a potpourri uh, of sorts. But how does that integrate with this, and and what kind of advantage does that carry with it? Yeah. So just really quickly, one last privacy thing. Sure. Amazon has a long tradition of handling private data. So if you think of the the sophistication of the organizations that are using AWS, like they're already giving Amazon a lot of data. So in a sense, this should follow as a natural extension. And mm. I don't know if That's they true. don't trust Amazon, they wouldn't be using Amazon AWS anyway. Very good point. And like, one just personal anecdote, like my fiance is a software engineer who builds on AWS and he spends a lot of his time asking ChatGPT to summarize AWS documentation. Mm. So this is very much a need and Amazon is just kind of like bringing it in house for their customers. Yeah. And so I just wanted to add that because that helped me understand yeah. it a little bit. And that'll win a lot of people over. Absolutely. They're already in yeah. the ecosystem. So, yeah. Exactly. And so for Bedrock, sorry about that. No, for Bedrock, no. it... um it seems to be some kind of like quilt of AI models and the user of course should, should never be expected to know what all of them do, but the user just, you know, they just want good answers. So it appears on the back end, Amazon will somehow call or incorporate the right model. And that could be like Meta's Llama 2, which is an, a top rated AI model that's open source that anyone can theoretically download and start fine tuning. So yeah, Amazon's going to use it. And then uh, there's Anthropic. They have a model. So that is kind of part of Bedrock's quilt. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you have more information on this, but just all that has been communicated that that I've seen is that they have a bunch of different ones in there and they will find the right one for you. Yeah. I mean, that then that right there sounds compelling as opposed to, you know, some yeah. other services that are really just, I mean, I can see benefits and, and disadvantages, I suppose, to, to both sides, either the broad strokes approach or the very narrow, this is just, you know, yep. our our stuff. Right. So, well, Amazon is master of scale. Yeah, so for sure. <laughs> they, yeah. So I used to work for Amazon. I was a product manager there. So this all makes, I, I'm reading them like a book. Like I get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this is classic and it's, it's making sense. And like I said, we'll just see. And I guess my summary of the situation is that it's just emblematic of the trend towards secure, safe, private, customizable, workplace focused chatbots that will cost you 20 to $30 a month. Yeah. Could be the best you, money you've ever spent. I don't know. Yeah. Love the summary. And Emily, love having you on the show. Thank you for uh, joining us today. I'm Emily Drybebus at uh, PC Mag. So everybody should follow your work over there. Thank you so much, Emily. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. We will talk to you soon. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. With all the same fun of IT Pro TV, ACI is amplified with new solutions for all your IT training needs. Entertain your team while they learn. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners who complete the form can receive as much as 65% off an IT Pro enterprise solution plan. You'll get the proper quote based on the size of your team. 